Hey y'all, welcome back to another video for No Melanin and I'm excited about today. I'm so excited. I can't stop smiling because today we are talking about nystagmus. We're talking about congenital or infantile nystagmus and I am going to try and do a simulator for you today. Yes, you. I am doing a simulator for you. This is going to be helpful for parents or caretakers, guardians. It's going to be helpful for those of us who have nystagmus. We have this form of nystagmus. There are multiple forms. Don't, don't quote me on how many, but I know that there is one form, there is more than one form of nystagmus, but the one that we have is from birth due to our genetic condition, albinism, which is caused by a lack of melanin, little to no melanin pigment being present in the hair, skin, and eyes of the affected individual. I am the affected individual. You, or if you are an albino or PWA, are the affected individual. So this is something that, like I said, I want to do and I hope that you get it. So position yourself, get ready. Are you ready to see through our eyes with the low vision, with the nystagmus? Are you ready? Okay, get ready. Okay, so right now on your screen, your vision is blurred, not in reality, but because you're watching this video, you can no longer see me in 3D, so to speak. You're looking at me now with the blurriest of blurred vision ever. It's hard to see, right? Now I'm gonna put on some glasses. That might help a little bit, you know? Eyeglasses, they don't perfect our vision, but they enhance it in some form or fashion. Let's introduce Stagmus. Are you ready? Do you see how this is going? Do you see the rapid movement? This is in the low degree when it's just general. Our eyes are pretty much always moving. Sometimes we have moments, there are times when we have moments where they're not moving and they're able to stand still. But for the better half of the day, we're moving at some point. So now you're seeing it in the low degree where we're still able to function a little bit. But let, now let's speed it up. Let's speed it up to that intensity. Oh my gosh, tell me you're not trying to read a book right now. Tell me you're not trying to do anything right now because your eyes are shaking a lot. And so now what you're trying to do, you're trying to figure out how to stop them from shaking because you're trying to focus. And the whole point of the shaking and the intensity is because due to that lack of melanin pigment, that little to no melanin pigment in our eyes, there are certain things back there that didn't form properly or they don't function properly due to that lack of melanin. When I say back there, I'm talking about in our eyeballs, those, all those nooks and crannies, those delicate areas of our eyes. So because of that, we're having trouble sending picture signals to our brain. Our brain is trying to interpret what the eyes are failing to show it in its full capacity. So our eyes are searching, trying to get that clear shot so that we can get interpretation from and from our brain. And it's, it's, it's getting difficult, it's getting kind of hard, but we're gonna kind of tilt our head to the side just a little bit, just a little bit. I don't know about you, but my favorite way to tilt is to the right. I like trying to focus out of my left eye. Now, somebody else might say your favorite spot is your right, but for the sake of this simulator, you're doing what I do, not what you do. <laughs> it's like, I'm just playing. We're gonna do the right too, because a lot of times the left doesn't work for me, so I'll tilt it over to the right. And what this does is, this is the null point. This is just helping me focus is helping me slow down my eyes a bit so that I can focus on what's before me. And this is our go-to because it really, it does help. It does. We might have to do it a couple times, but it helps us for the most part. So now let's shift over to the right because the left side, it ain't doing it for us. So now let's shift over to the right side. Let's do it. You see how it's slowing down? Okay. Now we can see, now we're focusing, now it's, it's coming in, now we're okay and we're happy again. And you're not like how I was a couple days ago, absolutely frustrated because my eyes are just giving me the blues. So, how was it? Did you like it? Was it fun? Was it entertaining? <laughs> you have just went through, I don't know how long that was, but you just went through a brief period of what it is like to see through the eyes of a person who has nystagmus on top of the fact that we have the low vision and what was it like? You have to let me know in the comments what that was like for you as the parent, as the guardian. What was that like for you? 
did you feel do you feel closer now to your baby or do you feel closer now to your sis or your bro or do you say can you now say okay I can kind of see what you're going through now that's insane like how are you able to function and again that's why I say we have specialized eyes we really do we have specialized eyes all the stuff that these eyes go through and the fact that we're able to still function and carry on our day-to-day -day activities as though it's nothing is truly a blessing from God and I just thought that little simulator would help in some type of way some type of form help you get to see in real real life what it is that we experience so now that we've done that simulator we're ready now to talk about nystagmus we're ready to talk about it from my perspective um, I'm gonna put it in real terms because like I said I've, I've had this since birth and for most of us with albinism congenital or infantile nystagmus has been with us since I believe I forgot the, the time frame but anywhere between I believe zero to six months is when it can show up and when your child is going to regular pediatric visits to meet with their pediatrician these types of things can be noticed or you might notice it at home and and bring it to your doctor's attention your child's doctor and they can begin to assess and understand it from there and since it's something that we've had from birth it's different from the other type of nystagmus and I'll, if I find it I'll put it on the screen the name of it in that in that instance is something that you acquire over time it can be brought about due to like a sickness or a disease it can be temporal like if a car accident has happened or something like that sometimes people can experience it temporarily so it's it's, it's different reasons why someone might go through it but it can be like I said temporary it doesn't have to be for a long period of time other times it can be longer just like I said depending on what has happened or what the person has gone through but in our case we've had it all our lives for those people they've had a period of time in their life where they haven't always had this issue with their eyes but for us it's been our whole life we don't know life outside of having nystagmus we've we've just we just don't know we've seen other people we've seen their eyes not shake and we've seen them you know do what they need to do but we just we don't know anything about it so a lot of times for people and 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 because nystagmus is something that you really don't know about until you meet someone who has it it's not something that you're going to see on a billboard every day or on the cover of a magazine or on the subject of a tv show it's not something that you're just going to see out in front of you so this is something that is only not known to people who have it as well as those who are associated with us and a lot of times because of that we'll get asked questions like why do your eyes shake so much i remember remember being a kid and a lot of times my peers would ask me like why do your eyes shake so much it was fascinating because they had never seen anything like that before and even now i'll i'll get I, the looks like I'm talking to you, but people are, look be like looking at my eyes like, <laughs> like they'll be looking like what in the world? Like that's so cool. And it is really fascinating. And sometimes I, I forget how cool it is until I run into people who are li literally just amazed by it. And nystagmus was something that used to be really uncomfortable for me as a child because with the just natural, you know, inquisitiveness, from my peers it was also met with that other side that wasn't just the natural inquisitiveness it was it was more so rooted in making me feel bad or making me feel some type of way about my eyes and so I was embarrassed to have nystagmus for a very long time growing up as a kid because I just felt like anything and everything was always going wrong like I had strabismus my eyes were crossed I had low vision and I had nystagmus then I had photophobia then I had this then I had that so it was just so much and I didn't like the looks. I didn't like the stares. I didn't like being talked about. It was very embarrassing um, standing like if I was trying to read aloud in my eyes because I was trying to focus on the the book or whatever I'm, I'm looking at, especially if I, if I get nervous. Even now, if I get nervous, my eyes will just start shaking. It, it's naturally shaking. But if I get nervous or if I'm on edge or if I'm if I'm I'm really just trying to do something or focus on something, it can make my eyes shake more just because I'm, I'm upping the ante. I'm making myself be a little bit more dramatic than I'm normally at because I'm, I'm a dramatic person. But, but when I when I raise it up to a higher extent, it can cause my eyes. It can actually like literally send them into overdrive, like shake, 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 shake. And so as a teenager, because I didn't understand it, 
I would be embarrassed and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I always felt like I had to try to prove that I could do it. But when my eyes would start shaking, it was nothing that I could do to stop them from shaking other than holding my head to the side. And um, the occasional head nod as well. That's another thing that you'll see uh, if you have a child or you yourself, if, you ever, if you've ever wondered, well, why does my head, why do I find it like slightly like involuntarily moving? That is again, another symptom of nystagmus, just trying to focus on what the picture is before us. So these things were something that I just did not understand, but I had to, I had to understand because I realized that I was special, that I was unique and that there was nothing wrong with me being the way that I was and still am today. And so if you are watching this, you might be a teenager like I was, or maybe you're an adult. I don't know where you fall in this line, but I just want to encourage you to know that you're not alone. You see my eyes shaking and you hear me talking about my experiences growing up. And even now, like I said, just a couple of days ago, y'all, I was frustrated. I'm like, come on, you see, like I'm talking to myself. I'm like, you see me trying to do this. Why would you shake right now? You're shaking at the most inopportune time. Like I'm trying to focus and you're just shaking so violently. And then I held my head to the side. That didn't work. Then I held my head to the other side. Then it slowed down for a couple minutes. Then about 10 minutes later, it started shaking all over again. So I'm just like, ugh, such is life for us. And it's, it's something that, hey, we've, like I said, we've gone through it since childhood. So we're pros at it. But making conversations or, or opening up conversations like these are really helpful because sometimes people just don't know. You don't know what to do in those instances. Because the thing is, we never know when it's going to happen. Like they're automatically, they're already shaking. Like right now, my eyes are already shaking. But when it comes to that intense shake, that is something that we can't time. We can't tell you what time it's going to happen, what hour, what day, what minute, what second. We can't tell you what month. We can't tell you like... I have periods where my eyes don't shake like that. Then I have other periods where they just go through this intense shaking period where I don't have anything else to do, but just let them do it. Cause what am I gonna do? I can't stop them. I don't have any way to stop them. And eyeglasses can help with that, you know, to some extent. But again, eyeglasses, prescription eyeglasses can only do so much. So it's just something that we've learned to live with and we've learned to accept as our normal you know what i mean one second it's just something that we've learned to accept as a normal part of our lives and it doesn't feel right when you yourself feel subconscious about it it also doesn't feel right when you have people who are looking at you and they're wondering things and it, sometimes it can be natural it can be just natural curiosity but to you it can make you feel some type of way because if you're already frustrated or you're, or you're already in your feelings about it and you you really just you're trying to figure out what's happening that can make you feel some type of way let me tell you your eyes are cool your eyes are so cool I can't say it enough our eyes are so cool they are specialized so whenever someone tries to look at you and make you feel down or bad about your eyes shaking or why do you have to hold your head like this? Or why does your head slightly not? It, it's just, it's for me. It's for me. <laughs> it's not for you. And if it's a natural curiosity, of course, explain it to them. But if you find it that people are just trying to make fun of you and belittle you, let them go their way because 10 times out of 10, they're not happy about something in their life. But as you know your truth and as you know the truth about your eyes and why they do what they do and you accept it, you, you will find that over time, what people have said, what people have done, how people have tried to make you feel, it really doesn't matter because you understand that you were created on purpose for a purpose to do great things. So we will talk about nystagmus more, I guess, if I, if I, if I want to do a part two about it, we'll talk about it more, I guess, from a medical standpoint. I am not a doctor, so we can talk about it from a medical standpoint. This was more of a personal, personalized side. But if you go on Instagram, I've done a couple of reels or short form videos where I've talked about nystagmus. I've talked about the different forms. And so you can go there. Um, I don't think I've done it in about two years or so, but I, I, I have some videos on there. So please go and check those out. And in the meantime, check out all the previous content that's here on Old Melanin. And I will talk to y'all later in another video. Love y'all so much. Bye. Ooh, y'all, my nose. My nose, my nose, my nose. Allergy season has been one for the books. Okay, let me get my thumbnail. Now, y'all, I was toying with this. I was. I was like, should I do over? Like, have my hair over? Because the last thumbnail, it was like back. So should I do over? Let me see. Oh, no, I wasn't going to do that.
Fein, dann bis.